Amen. Lift your right hand. Say, Holy Spirit, I love you. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you. Say, Holy Spirit, you are my sweetest heart. You are my dearest one. Say, Holy Spirit, take over, take charge, take all the glory. Say, Holy Spirit, give me understanding and I shall live in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. I have a short word for us tonight. Yes, it's going to be amazing. And uh, I don't know, are you ready for it? I'm teaching on the topic, because a month of sacrifice, and I'm teaching on sacrificing for more laborers. Sacrificing for more laborers. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Who is a laborer? A laborer is someone who is also involved in the work of God. Someone who is interested and is also involved and is also getting results when it comes to the work of God as regards to souls. Amen and amen. Many souls are dying. Many people are dying. Many people are going to hellfire. Hellfire is real. As all of us are sitting here, you must understand hellfire is real. And heaven is also real. But God wants all of us to come to where he is. And that's why the Bible said that hellfire was prepared for the devil and his angels, not for any human being. It's human beings and souls who follow the devil that follow him to where he must be. I think somebody is putting some coins somewhere. And I, I think a pastor or somebody should check it. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So, hell is real, heaven is real, and we must make sure we become a stopgap for people who want to go to hell. We must stop them. Sometimes we say, I will stop them. Stop and just Christ didn't say that the harvest is plenty, and the plenty harvest is going to hell. He said the only problem is that the laborers are few. So the problem is not the harvest of souls. No, that's not the problem. The problem are those who must make sure the harvest comes into the fold of God. That's the only problem. The, lab the laborers are slacking. They are few. And he said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest. So look at it. Matthew 9, 37. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. There are many people who want to be born again. They may play hard. They may play strong. They may play big boyism, big girlism, boss lady, boss man. And yet they really want you to talk to them. They really want to serve God. They really want to be born again. Very, very true. This week, Mommy and I went for visitation at the Hebron branch. And when we went, we met some three ladies. One of the ladies has about 20 earrings around the ear. So when you guys say, hey, I'm trying to say that it's a lot. It's not 20, but it's a lot. It's a hyperbole. So you see that <laughs> it's a lot. And when we, we spoke to them, I looked at the one with the plenty earrings, and I said, I'm going to train you for the work of God. She said, I'm ready. She said, I like it. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm telling you that there are many people who really want to love God, serve God, Follow Jesus, serve Jesus. But the people to help them, to tell them that come and follow God, come and follow Jesus, come and serve Jesus. And when the people come, the people to nurture them, encourage them, raise them, be with them, industrialize them, so that they too can also win more souls and be matured. The people to do that are few. Let me ask this question. How many of you here seated here to, today, this week, We've gone Monday, Tuesday, and today is Wednesday. How many, people, how many people here have been approached by someone with the gospel? The person spoke to you, I want to tell you about Jesus. If you are here like that, somebody has approached you to share the gospel with you this week. Lift your hands. Let me, let me see. Lift your hands. Somebody has approached you that, sister, I want to tell you about Jesus. Brother, 
I want to tell you about Jesus. Please, I want you to look around. Just look around. Is any hand up? Is any hand up? Any hand up? Wow. Somebody say, wow. No, you must say wow with, with like bewilderment, with surprised. You must be surprised, you must be amazed, and you must be flabbergasted. Say, wow. Say, say, wow. Okay. You two, this week, have you approached anyone here? You have approached somebody with the gospel. You have shared the gospel of Jesus with somebody. You have told somebody that Jesus loves you. I want to share the gospel with you. You have led somebody to Christ. You are here, and you have done that this week. Lift up your hands. Lift your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, but no, they say, and I say, oh, bump your seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. You have seventeen people. How many people did you talk to uh, from 2022? One person. When? Yesterday. Yeah, but how many people did you talk to? Two people. That is good. Who again lifted their hands? Yvonne, how many people did you talk to? Five. Okay, how many people did you talk to? Three. Antiva, you didn't lift your hands. One. Yeah, did you lift your hands? Never. Oh, never. Yes, yeah, sharp, sharp guy. Two. Okay. Right, a petal ball. One. Obejo. Five. Okay, who again? Anyebo. Five. Lady Pastor China. Four. Grace. Two. Wonderful. Who again? They were upon my daughter. About eight. Hey. Wow. You are shown that your pastor is Bishop Odenke, about to be 30. About eight. <laughs> I think in your branch, they normally use about before they start a statement. <laughs> you remember Bishop Odenke's birthday? About 30. So, about eight. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Who again? Who again? Uh, Bill, five. Pastor Mike, three. Who again preached to somebody? Pastor Foster, two. Who is there? Blantyne, six. V, two. Tooth, three. Wonderful. So can you imagine that the teachings I'm giving you, a lot of you have started talking to people, but can you imagine that nobody has spoken to you? What does that tell you? A lot of people are not doing the work of God, are not sharing the gospel, including some of us seated here. Mm. Mm. You must get to a level where people, you see people, and the first thing you want to tell them is that you'll be born again. You must be born again. There was one lady at the headquarters, she had a particular name. Because Pastor Steve and I used to go on evangelism with her. And when she went to evangelism, she said, if you don't repent, I'll repent you. <laughs> <laughs> and so her name was, if you don't repent, what will I do? I'll repent you. Evangelist Lizzie, if you don't repent, I'll repent you. God bless you. Oh, yes. You must be called Evangelist Nana. You go everywhere, then you are preaching everywhere. You say, I now, now I have come to you as an evangelist. If you don't repent, what will I do? And you sit in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> and for us to, what is the title of the message, if you remember? For what? For us to get more liberals, look at the title, what must we do? We must sacrifice. And today, what are we narrowing on this evening? This Super Wednesday. What are we narrowing on? That you and you and you and you and you will all be involved in training others to also be involved in winning souls. Let's go to John chapter 21, verse 15 to 17. When we, go, when we say John 21, 15, what comes to mind? Uh huh? If you love me, feed my life. It's, I've told you that when we say John 21, 15, you must know where we are going. John 21, verse 15 to 17. Glory to Jesus. So when they had dined, 
There are some people, they are very interested in dinners. Supper, dinner. Take me to buffet. I want four square meals. That's why somebody asked that. Why, why did they call it a square meal? And the meal too is not square. Hallelujah. So, never you must tell us where the square meals came from. Amen and amen. Amen. When they are eating, when they are dying, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this? He said, do you love me more than food? Some people, they love PlayStation more than God. They can play for 20 hours. Bosana, I feel partner. And if any boom, read. Bamanari. Bosa, boy, or barney, Ubishana, want to partner. Just a game, no running moon. And if any ura. Yeah. Do you love Jesus more than PlayStation? Do you love Jesus more than the food? Do you love Jesus? They cannot leave their, you see, they cannot leave certain things to follow Jesus very, very well. Cannot even leave their boyfriend or girlfriend. They can talk for 40 hours. Yes. One day I saw one guy, his eyes were red light. I said, What has happened? I've been talking the whole night. I've been talking the whole night. Oh. I'm closing the service. <laughs> <laughs> so when they had dined, Jesus said to them, do you love me more? We must look at that. He said, do you love me more than this? So you must love Jesus more than material things. Things that bring food on the table. Love him more than something. When Jesus asks, when he comes to you and wants to ask you a question, he also asks you, there's something you like. Do you like Jesus more than the thing that you like most? He says, Simon, Son of Jonah, loveth me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, What did he say? If you love me, what must you do? Feed my lambs. What are lambs? What is a lamb? A baby sheep. Small sheep. Baby sheep. That means that if you are, when people, somebody gets born again and the person is fresh, new baby, what must a mother do? Breastfeed. Have you seen many mothers in these last days? Some can throw their children where? In the ball, a dustbin. Some can throw where? In the bush. Some can even leave them one day. I, I, I went to the hospital with my wife. She was going to give birth to one of our children. And when she went there and she delivered, the, the nurses, I saw the nurses going helter skelter, seeking shelter. And they were looking for a mother. And the mother had run away and left the baby in the world. They were searching for the mother. They couldn't find the mother. But where did Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. She has given birth and has run away. Now, obviously, she cannot take care of the child. And everybody will say, the, the woman is wicked. The woman is very wicked. But there are many of you here, you have bought new souls, and you don't even know where they are. <laughs> you are wicked. You have brought Enoch at my word. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Say that. How many of you don't, you have brought a soul before, you don't know where the soul is? Lift your hands and lift. Don't add lying to your sins, please. You have brought a soul, you don't know where the soul is. Aha! It's like a mother, please hands down. It's like a mother who was giving birth and left the baby in a dustbin. But right now, that soul may be smoking now. That soul may be womanizing now. That soul may not have gone to church for four months. For two months, one month. Because you are not feeding the lamb. Some of you have one new, new, new souls. You don't know where they are. Some of you, if you, we add the souls you have brought, and yet we don't know where they are. They just came and they passed through Gem Chapel and they left, and the devil got them again. No, when you leave a baby, the baby is at risk. Some of the babies they die. 
So I'm asking you a question. You say you have won souls. Where are they? Where are the souls? He said, if you love me, feed my lambs. You must have a system in your life where you watch out for new souls that have come to the house of God. You feed them. You want them to grow. You want them to mature. You want them to increase. One of the dangers, one of the things in the world that the world is trying to keep or fight is absentee fathers. Yeah. Hit and run. Fathers. They give birth and the baby is there and they leave the baby. So all things that the world is trying to solve. And yet more ladies are agreeing to men who have not married them to give them pregnancies. And more gentlemen are also, I mean, convincing ladies that let me sleep with you, nothing will happen. And the ladies too are believing that nothing will happen. And when the pregnancy comes, they run away. Now, even when there's only one parent, it's not an easy thing. It's, listen, it's not easy. Leave the baby like that. Whilst you are trying to solve it in real life, we also have to, have to solve it in the kingdom. Because there are many born again people that old members and churches have left. And they don't know what to do again. Born again, but living their own lives. Born again, but at the mercy of wolves. Lambs at the mercy of wolves. Don't just be excited that I preach to five souls after bringing them. Where are they? He said, if you love me, feed my lambs. If you love me, do what? Where is it written? John what? 21 verse 15, if you love me, feed my lambs. And lambs are what? Baby sheep. If you love me, feed from 2022 till now. Ima, Ima no hajimai. Is ose hajimai. If you love me, he said, feed my lambs. Who have you gotten in this church as a new soul? That you said, you, you are my project work. I'm going to raise you till you become a pastor. Oh, yes. From 2022. That's when you came to this church, eh? Till now. How many souls have you won? Because in Joey's song, today we were even playing it. He, he sang that part. From 2022 till now. He sang it. From 2022 till now, how many souls have you established? In the house of God, who are also laboring. You see, sacrificing for more laborers who are also laboring. Because before you raise such people, it's, it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. Please be seated, praise the Lord. It's a great sacrifice. Righteous, how many people have you established in the house of God? How many people have you righteously established? And they are, they are here. None. They came for Sunday. Now, I'm talking about how many people established who came for Sunday. It's like they are also working for the Lord. For now, it's only one. Owen. I'm saying, and you're established. Maybe sit there, praise the Lord. Please, is, is God talking to you? Or is the message for somebody else? Is it for you or for somebody else? It's for you. How is it for you? Eh? Grace, how can this message be for you? Where do you come in in this message? Thank you, Papa. You are welcome. <laughs> Papa, please, um, because when I bring souls, I don't establish them. So, so wh wh where are the souls if you bring them? Now, where are they? Some of them are not coming again. You see? Yes. So, so this message, you think it will help us as the Lord is ministering to us? It will really help. Really help us. us. Yes. How? How? Because we've now gotten to know that when we bring the souls, we are supposed to establish them. Yes. We shouldn't just bring them for bringing sick. Thank you. Yes. Because some people bring for what? Bringing sick. Ask somebody, do you bring for bringing sake? Or you bring to establish them? Yeah. You are receiving the grace to bring and establish in the name of Jesus. Please be seated and praise the Lord. Is it powerful? 
2022, is God talking to you? Yeah. His new name in the church is what? 2022. <laughs> because from 2022, if you had had this mindset, the people that you bring to church, what would, that, what would you have done? You would have always established them in the things of God. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. From 2022 till now. That means two years now. So how many people have you really established in the church? You've not established any more. Hey, 2022 till now. Yeah. Please, have you seen how real this message is? Where's the microphone? Do, do you think that it's an important word God is giving us tonight? Talk yes. to us. Yes, Papa, thank you. Please, I think it's an amazing and an important word because, wow. like you said, um, it's not just about bringing or checking the numbers that, oh, Papa will check and say that, oh, Emmanuel brought a soul, so that's it. Mm -hmm. No. But it's about Do you know some people also bring it for checking? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I brought five souls. I brought seven souls for, che for checklist purposes. I bless you. Continue. Yes, please. But then the, the, the message is telling us that we should, we should bring the people and then establish them in, 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 in the house of God. And then uh, eventually they will also go out and then win more souls for God. Wow. So it's a, it's a timely word. Yes. Let's clap for 2022. <laughs> From 2022 till now, if he had focused on you, this soul I've brought, I will establish you. By now, he would have had about 20 of his kind. Even if he did one, that is one soul per month, he would have had 20 people established who love God, love Jesus, love souls, and are also going around to also win souls like himself. Amen and amen. amen. But now, people can, new people can come to the house of the Lord, and new people can come, and new people can come, and new people. And by the next two years, when you meet the same new people who came two years before, they are nothing in the house of God. In fact, some of them are backslidden. Some of them don't know what they are doing. Some of them don't even know anything about Jesus, about speaking in tongues, about loving God, about worship, about going out on evangelism, about also establishing others. They don't even know anything about the basic doctrines of Christianity. They have not joined membership class. They have not joined, what again, Stewart's class. They have not joined the Bible school class. Amen and amen. Such a person can be in the church dangling from one service to another like a dangling modifier. And yet, there will be nothing. It's like the person is empty. No word. No relationship with God. No intimacy because yeah, these things here, yeah, until you decide that you to you hold somebody's hand and train the person, nobody just goes like that. Ask all the baby, you, you were a baby one day. And when you were a baby, a mother and a father said, or a mother, if you're a single mother, or a father, if you're a single father, or both parents, if both parents were, they said, your mother said, I will not throw you away. I will give you breast milk, and I will give you nanwan, and I will give you SMA, and I will give you VGMA. <laughs> and he's saying, <laughs> yes, because you are upcoming. <laughs> and I'm going to give you, I mean, Banku, when mommy was three months, mommy was eating banku, three months old baby. Mommy, they didn't do it in three months. Yes, and what? And kukunte. Because the milk, the breast milk was not enough. Three months old baby. Banku. Yes. Oh, come here, you see, hey. Oh, say, hey. Hey, you see, hey. Hey, you Come here, what? I juke. And some of you, when you were a baby, you were even eating jollof. Remember when my child was six months, he was eating jollof and he was, when you give him a bone, he won't leave it. Otibo, when he was six months, when he holds a bone, he won't leave the bone. No matter what, he will not leave a bone. Yes. When he was, I remember, now, now he's about nine years. When he was six months, I remember we bought a new bed in the house. Six months, not even one year, six months. When he saw the bed and I put him on the bed, I was told him, he looked at the bed, then he would jump on it, then he would jump. Then I told him, even the child likes new things. Yes. 
You see, so when you, you bring somebody to church and you don't have the intentionality of I'm going to establish him, I'm going to establish her in the things of God, you're going to find out that the person will be there with them and say, I don't think this Christianity thing works for me. By the time you realize, back to the nightclub, back to smoking, back to weed, back to this, back to that, back to that. All of a sudden, it's like you didn't even work at all. And listen to me. If the devil gets somebody that left him, <laughs> that you were behaving some way and somebody preached to you and God saved you. And you now go back into the world and you enter the devil's hands. <laughs> One day somebody that I prayed for that God delivered from the addiction of smoking weed. He told me something. He said that weed smoking, eh, if you stop, let's say for one year, for three months, for two months, for one month, and you have stopped that, and one day somebody tempts you with the smoke, with the, what do we call it? The roll, you see, a stuff. <laughs> and, hey, uh, it looks like you know certain things, Yvonne. Hey. And somebody, why am I crashing me? And, <laughs> And you now get the roll, the small roll, and you just sniff a little. But he said, that little, eh? he told me that it is sweeter than any weed that you have ever taken that you stopped. Hey! He said, that I don't need the horn. But some are tasting it different altogether. Yeah. Never how kai 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 anymore. Never say ha ah, yes, then times. Hallelujah. <laughs> what you must do now is that when you deliver somebody from smoking and you have brought the person to Jesus, what you must do now is to be on the person. Because the devil is on the lookout to snatch the person back. Don't think that the devil just leaves people like that. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. You have gone to Jesus. Bye bye. I won't tempt you again. Bye. It's not like that. It's not like that. Or you were a womanizer and you stopped and you became born again and, and your, your shepherd didn't follow you up and somebody comes to tempt you again. The one you will do, it is sweeter than all that you have ever done put together. And that's why I'm saying that. If we don't shepherd people and feed the lambs, we don't love God. That's what Jesus Christ said. That if really, if you really love me, what you have to do is that the new babies that have been born into the kingdom, if you really love me, you will feed them. You will make sure they don't die. You will make sure they don't go back. You, you will make sure. He said, if you don't do it, it simply means you don't love me. So some of you can lift your hands in worship and say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus Christ said, yeah, come again. One man, one man of God said, he lifted his hand and said, Jesus, I love Jesus Christ. Don't say you love me. Go and feed my lamb. Don't say you love me. Just show it. If you love me, show it. You think that if new members come and we are around them and we are caring for them, we are visiting them, do you think we will have time to fight ourselves? You won't have time. The reason why there are gossips in churches, the reason why there are infightings, we are really not doing the work that Jesus Christ gave to us. We are not doing the work, but we are going to do it. I said, but we are going to do it. I said, but we are going to do it. Yeah. One of my daughters here is in primary school or JSS. Primary school or JSS? Oh. In Sunday school or one of, in, in, it's a member of this church. When me and I were counseling her, and she said that in the school, the boys can come to you and say that we want to have sex with you. Primary school. Primary school. And in primary school, or even in, in Jesus, he said, a boy can go and tell a lady, can you talk to your friend for me so that I can have something to do? Sure. The devil is raising people, I'm telling you. Then he did a girl. He's the one doing The devil knows he has a short time. So he's working with everything within him. I'm talking about primary school and Jesus. Oh, yeah. Primary school and Jesus. 
primary school and JSS. Many years ago, my son was in a particular school. I will not mention the name. Before the Lord made us start GCS. A particular school. And when it was break time and the teacher was not there, he said two ladies went under the desk. And they were saying, you just were saying, kiss me. This one was saying, kiss me. Then this one was teaching this one. He said, do you know how to do it? This one said, do you know how to do it? Then he went and told them, stop it. It's not good. Stop it. He separated them. Yes, yes my son. <laughs> my son, Steve When I went to the, the school, some of them told me that your son is a very disciplined boy. He said, they said that if they are even playing, they said that he got a best student one day and they were playing worldly song that he should come and dance, a best student. He stood up a, a back and he said, no, I'm not dancing. He said, why? He said, the song is not good. That time was about four years. He said, the song is not good. <laughs> why? Because we've trained him that another person shouldn't influence him to do the bad thing. He should rather influence, because even in, in, in crutch, now the devil has agents in crutches. There are destinies that are in crutches, in crutches. People are being raised. There was one of uh, the people, the, the place, uh, the people we prayed for, in one of these places. She was introduced to pornography in P4. Yes, and now the enemy had taken over. The devil is raising people. Oh. Praise the Lord. And that's why Jesus Christ said, if you love me, what, what shows that you love me? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Why? Because the lamp is vulnerable. The lamp is vulnerable. The new soul is vulnerable. You think that, oh, all of us have come to church. There are some people who are going through stuff. You must be with them. You must raise them. You must call them. You must, after church, you must hold their hands and pray with them. You must you tell them, you must see the struggle in their eyes. And you must tell yourself that this person will not go back into Satan's hand. This person will not go back into the world. This person will not go back into sin. I'm going to hold his hand. I'm going to hold her hand. If you love me, you will feed my lamb. Feed my lamb. You love me more than this, Peter, son of Barjona, or son of Jonas. He said, if you love me, you will feed my lambs. You feed my lambs. Many people win souls and they don't feed their souls. And very, and very soon he said, when they look around the church and the souls came, but they are no more there. How many people have we not brought into the house of God who are no more there? Because we didn't follow them up. Because we didn't visit them. You see, we really don't love God. Because we don't know what it means for one new soul to come to the house of God. If you know the value of a soul, you won't fight. We won't fight ourselves. You won't do what will make a soul to leave the house of God. You know the value of a soul? Many Christians don't know the value of a soul. Do you know what it means to the father when a soul is entering hellfire? You don't know what it means to the father. You don't know what it means. We don't know what it means. And that's why today God is telling us, do you love me? If you love me, he said, feed my lambs. Continue for me. He said, he said unto, unto him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He asked him the second time, Peter, do you love me? Peter, how dumb you Do you love me? <laughs> Look at it. He said unto him, yea, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, what did he say next? What did he say next? So now, from the first one, he has so fed them that lamb have become what? Sheep. That means they have matured now. And Jesus says that even if they mature, don't leave them. Do you know, I was already watching for some time. No, don't leave them. He said that even when they have moved from lamb to sheep, don't leave them. Keep feeding them. Keep feeding them. Keep feeding them. 
For some people, they are in churches. You think that they are in church. You think that they are, they are okay. They have been around for some time. They are not okay. They have a lot they don't understand. There are some people that have been in church for one year or two years. But if another leader rebukes them right now or shouts at them, they don't really understand. Why did you shout at me? I've stopped the church. Their maturity is left with a lot. But if you don't talk to them through it, and you don't love them through it, and you don't walk with them through it, yeah, the devil has stolen them again. Do you know that many people in churches, little things can offend them because they are not matured. They need to be trained. Oh, yeah. For example, maybe somebody is playing the keyboard and MD looks at the way he's playing. Hey, stop it, stop it, stop, stop. The one says, stop it. I'm not saying you stop it. I'm just saying that. And MD says, stop it. Then the person will say, I won't play keyboard in church again. Oh, you see. Or the person is playing drum. Hey, stop it. The person will say, before all the people, I was really in the spirit playing the drum. And you told me to stop. I won't play drum again. Then the first person to stop playing drum should have been Ikechuku. Because what Minister Saki has done to him. <laughs> Let me see that prayer, Lord. <laughs> or playing the bass guitar side, say, hey, stop it. And listen, I think that one of the things we must teach is how to be a member. Because if we don't train you to, on how to be a member, even the little things that shouldn't offend you will offend you. I'm telling you. There's a way to be a member that I am a part of the body of Christ and nothing shall offend me. I will be in the house of God. I will stay strong. I will love God. He said, feed my lamb. Then from feed my lamb, he said, feed my sheep. So even when you think they have become sheep, keep feeding them. Hold your hands through it. One day, I called one of my sons and we're talking. When I was speaking, speaking, speaking to me, and I was explaining some mysteries on giving. And I have, I've taught it in church before. He said, Papa, I've not heard this before. He said, this has changed my giving now. He said, my entire thing was not even good. But it, it has corrected now from what you have told me. I said, hey, even this person has stayed in the church for about five years now. Can I tell you that there are people in this church who have been in the church for seven years who still don't pay tight? Seven years. Are you shocked? Don't be shocked. Sheep even need feeding. He said, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. They are sheep who need feeding. Do you know who have been in church for seven years and yet they are not stewards? It's shocking. But at the same time, they are certain sheep. They have not been converted in certain areas. Yeah. It's shocking that some people have been in the church for three years and they have not done membership class. They've not done stewards class. Some people too, they have done stewards class half for about five years. They don't finish. Feed my sheep. But the fact that somebody has become a sheep does not mean leave the person. Hold the person. Look at, start, touch three people and tell them that we will still be feeding ourselves. We will still be feeding ourselves. Tell, tell somebody that we will, we will be feeding. We will be feeding. Share. Sure. Hold the person's hand and say that I'm teaching you holiness. Mm. Some of you, your, your, your sheep at your cell level, you don't know the things they are struggling with. You say, oh, but 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 for oh, years. oh, he's been around for three years. oh, he's been around for one year. No. If they even move from lamb to sheep, still feed them. To feed them. Continue for me. He said unto him the third time. Please, how many times now? Third time. What did he say the third time? Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou. No, please do video of this. Pastor James, come. Do video. Please imagine Jesus standing here and Peter standing here. How many of you here? Somebody you know will always will look at you and say, do you love me? Then you say that, I love you. Then you are there, do you love me? He says, I love you. 
She said, I love you. You know, she said, do you, it's like it's too much. Hey, why? The song was saying, Do you love me? I love you. Do you love me? I love you. Do you love me? <laughs> Ready, go. Do you love me? I love you. Do you love me? I love you. Do you love me? <laughs> it is even surprising. No, if somebody asks you, do you love me? They say, I love you. They say, do you love me? They say, I love you. Isn't it getting too much? It's getting too much. But Jesus looks at Peter again and asks him, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter was grieved because Jesus Christ had said to him the third time, not a real crowd. <laughs> I said, yes, we need me. Need. <laughs> and Jesus said, don't believe me. <laughs> he said, lovest thou me? That's what I said. And he said unto him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. So even when they have also climbed to the next level of maturity, you must still be feeding them. Very, very important. Christine, my daughter Christine is here. How long did it take you to start winning souls? When did you become? How long? Okay, when did you become my daughter in the Lord? Yeah. Um, Papa, please, I was in JHS three. JHS three. Where are you now? Um, university level four hundred. Final year university. University of Ghana Business School, final year. She became my daughter. I started teaching her, preaching the gospel to her when she was in JSS 3. When did you start winning so seriously? <laughs> like, I think level 300. Did you, did you hear that? Did you hear that? So I'm telling you that even if you think the person has been around for a long time, still feel the person. She became my daughter in JSS3. She's now in final year university. Level 400. And the only time she became serious to also win souls was in level 300. Just about a year ago. And when we, so when we are telling you that your home cell members are not safe, you think that they are safe, Arma. If you don't, you don't intentionally say, I'm going to win the soul and raise them, you're going to have a lot of casualties in the kingdom. Now, in between that, how was I training you? Was I easy on you? Oh, please, no. There were times Pastor James to report me to you. Then yes. you came me in the office. I came there in the office. I said, you can't do that. I said, I've, I've been your biological and spiritual father from Genesis 3 till now. Don't do that. Yes. Was, I, was, was it a simple thing? Oh, did it help you? Yes, please. It helped you. What, how did it help you? Um, oh, please. From that time, you give me targets and then you check up on me on the Saturday yes. if I've gone for home sale. Yes. And the Sunday after everything to you, ask yes. me how many people I brought to you. Thank you. Always checking. Always checking. Amen and amen. Well, some of you home sale members, they own. If you wait, it is level 700. <laughs> That they will also start winning souls if you don't take care. Her father, her own biological father, has called me to thank me for the way I raised her. Yes. Oh, yes. You know, pastors say we do what even biological parents don't do. So anytime I put even something on my WhatsApp status, her father is the first person to com comment. Oh yeah, Mr. Kwachi. The Kwachis, the sitting friends of the Lord. Oh yeah. Today you are here for opening prayer. You are here for opening prayer. Before, before opening prayer, you were here. What happened for that to happen? Do you remember what happened? What, what happened? Please, quickly. Um, I had a word with Papa in the office and he yes. told me that he's, he's going to be checking me from then 
moving on and he's going to make sure that every time he finds out if I do come and I come on time because it's not yes. just about coming back, she'll make sure I come early. Yes. yes. And I asked you, have you prayed opening prayer before? No, you, you said no. You said, said no. I and I said from today, you're going to be praying opening prayer with those who are leading prayer. You must be here when the opening prayer is going on. Yeah. If you, you are not with the sheep and you are not feeding the sheep and you are not interested in the sheep and you are not detailed when it comes to the sheep, you find out that you are losing a lot of lambs and sheep without knowing. They will not grow. They will not be trained. Amen and amen. When you see that a pastor has raised a bunch of serious people, the Lord gave him grace to be intentional about raising them. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't just come. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't just come. Intentional. Oh, yeah. And today you brought your friend. What's your name? Steve. Wow. Steve, he brought you. Yes. When did, is, it, is it your first time? Last week you were here. Friday all night you were here. And you have brought him again today. You see, he's growing. God bless you, Steve. When you meet somebody like this, like he met me in the office, he began changing. When somebody meets you, they must begin to change. Don't let somebody meet you and you are kissing them. No. Raise them. Raise them. If you don't say papa. Raise them. If you don't raise them, you will erase them. Because some of you, the souls you win will be men and women. And you must make sure that you are careful. When you are raising the opposite sex. And you are in their room at 1 a.m. You are not a soul winner, you are a wizard. What are you doing in somebody's room at 1 a.m.? Amen and amen. Raise them. Don't become the reason why they fall. Raise them. Raise them. Decide that I'm going to raise them. Receive the grace to raise. Amen. This is the praise Lord. Believe seated. Amen and amen. I think I can finish preaching here. Sacrificing to raise more liberals. Sacrificing to raise what? More liberals. Do you think that if the first doctor, first medical doctor, was selfish and he died, do you think there will be another doctor? Most of you, the reason why your home cell is like you are selfish. You don't raise them. So when you are not there, it's like the whole thing is spoiled. The first medical doctor who did surgery and he opened up somebody's stomach. If he had not decided I'll train somebody and he had died with that knowledge, where will medicine be? The first nurse, they said it was Florence Nightingale. If Florence Nightingale had not pass their knowledge on where will grace be grace has been trained as a nurse now you see the praise of god let me please see that amen and amen you know, they even built a school for doctors so that the thing can continue if christianity we also don't build and train people who can also train others Christianity cannot continue the way it should continue. I'm telling you, it can't. Are you hearing me? Yes. And that's why you must be a trainer. Yeah. Okay, so it's war. The thing about soul winning and Christianity is war. The devil wants the souls. And you also want the souls for God. So it's war. And in any war, those who win and win well are those who have been trained and trained well. I want to ask you a question. Can you compare Ghanaian soldiers to American trained soldiers? Ah, sister. Brah. Can you compare Liberian trained soldiers to American soldiers? They said that in America they have a force. I don't know whether it's a Delta force or whatever. They said that if they bring only five to a nation, the, the nation can stand still. One to, they, they have a special way they train them. Special forces. When they step, they, only one, two, three, four, five. 
The whole country can come to a standstill. There's and one president, uh, I think that the Russian president, that he's a trained soldier, Vladimir Putin. Trained. KGPA. KGP. Yes, trained soldier. They say that when they are, they are training them, they can give them an assignment that enter a nation and for example, for is an example, assassinate this person without any weapon and come back safely. And they have been trained for it. They have been trained for it. And he can go and come back to Russia as if nothing has happened. And by the time you watch the news, the person is dead. Training. If you don't take the church as a training school, you won't get a lot, a lot from it. I'm telling you. All you need is my head was paining me, it is gone. All you get is my stomach was paining me, it is gone. All you get is my leg was paining me, it is gone. That's all. It loses the excitement. You see, what is your adventure for the kingdom? If you don't have any escape for the kingdom, your Christianity is boring. Your Christianity is not nice. You, you, you must be going on so winning and this one will be saying, I will not listen. I will not hear. This one will try to slap you. You go and say, hey, be careful. You see, it makes your Christianity interesting. Some of your Christianity is very boring. Only story be hard to tell. Because you don't go anywhere for the Lord. No escape it. What is your escape in the kingdom? What have you suffered for the kingdom? What, what extreme level have you gone for the kingdom? What extreme thing have you done for the Lord? Training. If you love me, feed. 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 Have you gone for evangelism for 12 years before? Have you decided that this year I will train 50 people to also win souls? Have you, have you decided that before from yourself? But if, if, if your cell has five members and you begin to train them, all of them begin to have 50 members. But all of them will begin to now go out on evangelism like you. They will all begin to move. You see, I normally tell the stewards when I'm teaching them that if you don't, I give you a, a, like an outline for your cell and you don't take it like a training manual that you, these people around me for the cell meeting, I'm training them. A year will come by and all your members would have left you. Or the number will reduce, or the number will be the same. In, in ministry, eh, if you maintain the same numbers, you are dying. But if you go on escapades for the kingdom, your Christianity becomes exciting and, and fruit producing. Receive the grace to go on escapades for the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. If you love me, what must you do? Feed. Hallelujah. So before, you see, what separates soldiers from civilians is training. If the Bible calls you a soldier of Christ, you must submit to training. Yeah. I said if you don't see the, the, the church as a teacher training, as a school, do you know teacher training? How many of you know teacher training colleges? Please teacher training, what do they do? So when the teachers go, what do they do? They go and teach. When the students go, what do they do? The students go there and the teacher is training them. They are also seated. They are also seated and the teacher is training them. They start to teach. They start to... By the time they go out, what, what, have, what have they become? They have also become teachers. That's how the church should be. When you sit under your pastor and you sit under, at a point you must also become a teacher. You must also become a, a solid teacher of the word. You know the word and you are also training others. We end with Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. Let's all read. I want all of us to read this together because that's our closing scripture. Ready, go. For when for the time you ought to be, uh -huh, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And I become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. He said, for when, for the time you ought to be what? Paul was talking, the Apostle Paul was talking, talking to which people? Church members, Christians. And he said, by this time, eh, you also should have become what? You also should have become what? You also should have become what? 
you also should have become what? So every single person who is under teaching should also become a teacher in the kingdom. He said, after some time, you ought to have become teachers. Nana, you should have also become a solid teacher by now. Chire chire Bible la. Ko for sure sa no mo bo mo So obey the Bible. You may be sitting there praying, Lord. Grace, by now you should be able to teach the scriptures. People will look at you and they say, Kai, grace has grace to teach. And you'll be raising other ladies who also have fierce love for God. Come on. You see there. Mabel, by now, you, you should have been able to study the scriptures and build yourself to a point. When you stand there and you are teaching souls, you are winning souls everywhere, they say, Kai, this lady carries grace. Oh, Mabel carries grace. The port can never be full. Oh, bless you, may be sitting in the presence of the Lord. How many people are teachers in this church? How many of you have gone out to also raise others also? Yeah. Now when you enter secondary school, one day, one lady was telling mommy and I how when she went to SSS, her school mother was training her to go to sugar daddies. SSS, while she was still in SSS. School mother was training her to go to sugar daddies. I was training her to, on how to smoke shisha. In essence, so now some of the ladies have been trained in the act of sex. In SS, and they take it to a university. Yeah. Hmm. Mommy, weren't you here? The old office. When they brought one gentleman, and gentleman was saying that it was his school, school father that arranged a lady for him. School father. Look, the devil is raising people. Who, God through us must raise more laborers. But the truth of the matter is that for you to raise more laborers, it takes sacrifice from you. When we close from church and you have seen new people, that's not the time to still be talking to your fellow pastor or fellow lady pastor. That's the time to look for the who to train, who to raise, who to, who, who to also raise to become a soul winner. All PMS members, all church members, when we close and you are talking to yourselves, you must be encouraging each other that Charlie, we must take the work to the next level. How many of us are going to do that? How many of us are going to sacrifice to raise more laborers? Look, Christine, if you had helped Pastor James in that school, by now, you would have had a lot of people that came from your loins that you have raised for God who are all submitting to Pastor James on Legon campus and all of them are also so winners. Also, we need souls. You would have had people like Aristocle, like you have people like Graciela. It's nice, nice names. Like Elena, nice, like Gabriel. People like Fiona or Franco. Hallelujah. <laughs> So right now, who have you trained? See, look, look, at, look at who have you trained? Who can also win souls? You ought to be a teacher. One sign that you are faithful is not just I've been here for a long time. One sign that you are faithful is that you are able to teach others also. He said the same things I've taught you. He said commit it to faithful men who are able to teach others also. That's a sign of faithfulness. Papa has trained from Jesus. No, you should be able to the same thing that we souls committed to other people. So before you finish, I've given you an assignment. Go and raise other soul winners. Go and raise other soul winners. Church, 
can we go and feed the lamb and feed the sheep? Can we go and raise other people socially? Can you stand with a shout of praise?